Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Renee and Sandy and River and Monica and Leo Luminary and Shelly. How are you guys doing? Are we doing good today? Hi, Sharon. How are you doing, Miss Sharon? Are you happy to be able to be in the live stream rather than getting treatments? <laughs> Hi, Miss Tina, and, and hi, Charlene. Are you new here, Charlene? I'm just gessoing a page. I usually start off by gessoing a piece of watercolor paper so that we can throw a whole bunch of other stuff on here. Let me take my sweater off before my sleeves end up in the... Hi, Creta. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Kristen. Hello, hello. So, uh, I hope everybody's doing good. I have been sick for the past two days, or at least just feeling under the weather and pretty much sleeping for two days. So, anybody that got anything in the auction, I'm not going to be shipping anything out until Monday because I think I got myself not feeling good out of stress before the auction and, and everything. So I had to rest for a couple days, which put me behind a couple days um, because I just was not feeling good. My stomach was hurting. I just felt overall sick. I had upset stomachs, which I haven't had upset stomachs in a while. And I, you know, I, I have medicine for it and I used to have to take it on a daily basis, three or four times a day. And then it went down to like once a day and then I wasn't taking it all at all. But all of a sudden this past couple of days, I was taking it like it was candy because my stomach was so upset. So I almost didn't do this, the mixed media mashup because I didn't know if I would feel up to it even even like this morning because I literally like slept and I was up for like three hours yesterday and then went back to sleep and slept and woke up at like 8 30 this morning and still didn't feel that great but was hoping I'd feel better and I kind of feel obviously I feel a bit better but um yeah so I'm not going to get everything out on Thursday which is tomorrow like I thought I mean I start everything's you know I already got things packed and stuff like that but it's just, you know, hello, focus. I gotta turn off the autofocus on this sucker. Hold on a second while I do that because this thing does not like to focus on white paper, at least until I have color on the paper. It does not like to focus. Um, yeah, it sucks, but it's not a bug. It's just my Crohn's. Um, it sucks. However, I will say that even though I was sick, well, the first day, I didn't start to feel sick until like the late afternoon. That's when I started to feel iffy. And I still worked through that. So technically, I was sleeping like a day and a half because... There was like a full day where I was kind of feeling iffy. I, my stomach wasn't feeling great, but I still worked. And by worked, I didn't like, see, in order to pack a lot of things, like like all the orders from the auction, I have to bend over, grab things out of bags, bend over. I knew I was not feeling well enough to keep bending over. I felt like if I bent over a lot, I was just going to vomit. <laughs> so I like stayed stationary at my desk. But what I did do, because I felt like I got to get something done, I did get everything, believe it or not, transferred from my Etsy store over to my new Zibit store. I, I can't believe I did it. I can't believe it. I actually got every bit of it transferred over already and open. My, my Zibit store is open, ready to go. Like, I, I, I don't know how I did it. I guess just sheer determination. And after I paid my last Etsy bill, which 
was like, okay, I've had enough. Um, there is still one of each item in my Etsy store. Um, with, if you look at my Etsy store, you could still buy anything in my Etsy store. There's still one of each stock, one thing. But in the description, you'll see, it'll say, if you want more of this item, and it gives the link to my Zibit store. So you can go over there and see the Zibit store. So everything's good. My Zibit store is open, ready for business. So if you want something out of my Etsy store and you want more than one, buy it from my Zibit store. I would I prefer if you, you know, know about my Zibit store to buy from my Zibit store and leave the stuff in my Etsy store because everything that's in the Etsy is in the in the Zibit with more quantity. And I actually put up two new items, Halloween stamps that I got in already. Um and then on top of that, the whole the whole reason I did the auction was to buy stock for my Zibit store. Well I did that. I sat online and bought a ton of stuff for my Zibit store. So I've been doing that too. Um, but yeah, so hopefully my Zibit store does well because it would suck if it didn't, but you know, we'll see. I mean, obviously it, it'll, time will tell and you know. Yeah, I'm feeling better now than I was, but I'm still not feeling 100%, you know, that, that kind of iffy feeling but yeah I pretty much just slept I just didn't feel motivated to do anything because I just felt icky every time I moved around too much I felt I got like a stomach ache I'm still yawning as if I hadn't slept enough <laughs> but while this is drying I can show you my zibit store really quick um, I'll take you with me and show it to you. Uh, okay. So if you go to Google and go to www.zibit.com, it's kind of like ribbit, but zibit. That's how you'll remember it. And then you go up here, search for items on, on zibit. Uh, so I'm not even signed in here. So it's as if I don't exist on this computer because I didn't do anything on this computer. All the stuff I did was on the other computer. So you would look up Pink Poodle Crafts, all one word. And it's not Pink Poodle Crafts store like it was on Etsy. Because for some reason, Pink Poodle Crafts was taken, which makes no sense to me. Um, but all one word, Pink Poodle Crafts. Hopefully my store will come up. No. Okay. Well, how do you search for a store then? So that's the thing that both, I guess both Zibit and, uh, and Etsy really need to take care of is the fact that you can't search for a store, which is very weird. You should be able to search for a store. I don't understand how to search for a store. Huh. I'll have to contact them and, and ask them and make a su strong suggestion that, you know, people don't know my store link, but, um, let me see. Well, let me sign in. Let's see. Yeah, it did. Okay. I can go to my store this way. Um, there we go. So I'll go to my store this way. It's pinkpoodlecrafts.zibit.com. So just add zibit before the dot com dot zibit.com. So I'll put that in the thing because here's my store. Here's all the items I have. And then you can go to the start shopping or up here where it says shop. And this will give you the categories all on the sides here. Um, there's the two new Halloween stamps I have, which is this one here. Which has like 24 stamps on it in that set. And this one here has 12 stamps. Same size, the, the set is the same size, but this is a big stamp right up here with the witch and the happy Halloween. So it takes up more room. And then we got this bigger one down here, which is why it's only a 12 piece because the stamps are a little bigger. But anyway, that those are my Halloween stamps, but it's pinkpoodlecrafts.zibit.com is the store name, store site, but I'll paste it in here. Pinkpoodlecrafts.zibit.com instead of .etsy.com, which is what it normally would be. Yeah, I spelled it exactly right on here, but 
you know, I think they, you know, both Etsy, that, that's a fault of Etsy as well. Etsy was, it was very hard to find a shop, like a, sp a specific shop, and it shouldn't be that way. It should be easy. You know, if you put in the exact shop name, the shop should come up. And I need to contact Zibit and be like, dude, <laughs> people need to, you know, need to find me. And, you know, I can't depend on everybody having the link. Some people just know me by my YouTube name and need to search it through that. You know, like it's stupid. But I will be changing all the links from under all my videos from the Etsy to the Zibit link. Um, I just haven't gotten that far yet. Thanks, Krita. So that's the exciting news for that. So how's everybody else doing? Hi, Barbara and Shazzy and Rome and... <clears throat> Missy and Kathleen. And Jill. And my fairy treasures. Jill, you're asking what my DIY Mod Podge recipe is. It's two parts Elmer's glue, one part water. That's it. Just mix it together. I don't do half water, half glue, because then the glue is too watered down, I feel like. I do two parts glue and one part water. Hi, Pauline. So who's playing along tonight? Hi, Mary. <clears throat> yeah, I still have my piece of broken glass on my table. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're getting better, Missy. Hi, Lorena. Hi, Pearl. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Crafting Lady. Everybody's playing along. Awesome. Awesome sauce. Still waiting for this to dry. Maybe if I use my heat gun, that might help. You're just watching tonight, Creta. That's all right. Yeah, sometimes it can give you inspiration just to watch. Yeah, I'm glad it wasn't like a cold that I was sick with or anything. Because, I mean, not that I'm glad that my Crohn's was flared up. But I don't mind like a little flare up here and there. Like that's to be expected. Because my Crohn's is not like, it's not ever going to be fully gone. But, I mean, maybe it will be someday if they finally get that vaccine taken care of. They're in the process of it. But who knows how long that'll take. But I'll still have flares here and there. I'm just, I'm surprised I haven't had more than I've had. Because to be honest, this is the first one in quite a long time. You know, uh, even if you can call this a flare, even, um, it's just, you know, a mild flare really. And I just felt very tired and I knew it was my stomach because I didn't really feel like eating and, you know, and then, you know, it's starting to get better. Hopefully we're doing what we do every Wednesday, which is called mixed media mashup, where we play an art game where I pick random cards out of here and they have different props on it and we do the props and if you do them live with me and then post your picture in our group 
Um, I'll go through and look at all the pictures and take everybody's name down and do a drawing. If you can't do it right now, as long as you do it within the next 24 hours and post a picture, I do another drawing next week during Mixed Media Mashup. Like, like tonight I'll do a, a drawing first for everybody who did it last week who couldn't do it during the night so they did it within 24 hours afterwards because some people can't do it live right with us but they'll take the time within 24 hours or so to get a picture up of it finished so so you got two chances to win if you do it live with us you'll have a chance to win right tonight and whether you know if you do it live with us You'll also be in the in the drawing for the next week as well with the other people. So you get an extra little bonus if you are live, uh, if you do it live with us. You get two chances to win. You skipped your coffee yesterday. I don't. I don't really drink coffee. Like here and there, I'll drink it, but I'm. It's not one of those things I drink every day. In the winter time, I'm more prone to drinking coffee and it's not really coffee i have a curing i never use the damn thing but i have it for in case somebody comes over and wants coffee but i you i drink the the french vanilla stuff that you can get from folgers it's like a, a it's kind of like the stuff you would go to the gas station and get the french vanilla cappuccino you know that, that stuff it's exactly that stuff in a powder form because that's what that is because i used to work in a, in a convenience store and we used to fill those machines with the french vanilla all it is is a powder a pre prepared powder and they sell it in the grocery store and I love it so I get that and that's my coffee and I'll have that um it has caffeine in it it's uh it's kind of it's an instant type of coffee so I guess it's coffee but tastes more like hot chocolate to me sort of but french vanilla I don't really consider it coffee even though it does have caffeine in it though but in the winter I'm more prone to drink that and like I do like Starbucks, I'll get like a triple mocha frappuccino in the summertime, and then in the winter time I might get the white chocolate, uh, white chocolate something. I don't know what the hell it's called, but I'm not, you know. But I don't. I might get something from Starbucks once a week, and you know. But in the winter months when it's really cold, every morning I might get my little cap French. French vanilla powder in, you know, in a cup and drink that, you know, but it's not really for caffeine purposes. It's more to warm me up. Hi, Laura. Caffeine doesn't really affect me. And I've drank, you know, on and off caffeine all my life, whether it's, you know, I drink my tea. I believe my tea has caffeine in it, but if I don't drink it, it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? If I drink something else, like I would drink Sprite. I switch, you know, like, and, and if I drink Sprite, which has no caffeine, I don't notice any difference. Somehow, just caffeine doesn't affect me. Never did. I don't know why. I don't know. It just never became a thing for me. Hi, Yola. Hi, Leather and Jade. You're doing mixed media mashup tonight, Yola. Awesome. Really, you get a headache if you don't? Well, what I do notice is if I ever do get a headache, which is rare, I usually don't get headaches. I usually will get a migraine. Um, headaches, I don't know if I've even ever had a true headache. I've always, you know, I always had, I had an issue on and off throughout my life with migraines. But I know that if I am starting to feel like I'm about to have a migraine, if I drink like some of that coffee stuff, I, it will help take, I take two Tylenol, drink some of that coffee stuff and take one of my painkillers and I can usually keep it under bay unless it's a really bad one. Um, as long as I catch it super early, um, because caffeine will help that and it, it has helped that. But as far as giving me energy or whatever, no, it doesn't do that for me. I remember one time I was driving back from Memphis with my friend and it's like a three and a half hour drive and we had been, you know, partying all weekend, having fun. And she was like, well, stop and get an energy, energy drink. And I'm like, okay, I'll try that. And I got a Red Bull and she's like, have you ever had an energy drink? I'm like, no. She goes, oh, well this, this should work for you for sure. So we stopped off at an exit, got it, got a Red Bull, drank the Red Bull. It was disgusting, but I drank it did nothing for me. In fact, it made me more tired. So she's like, okay, let's get you a different one. Let's get you a monster. 
So, okay, stop off at a different exit like 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, get a monster, drank most of that. It was also disgusting. Again, was exhausted. I said, is this supposed to be give me energy? Like, what's the deal? And she's like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> she's like, if I were to drink in a Red Bull and then a monster, she goes, I would have been bouncing off the walls. You, on the other hand, are falling asleep. <laughs> Yeah, for some people, I guess, Pearl, but not for a lot of people, migraines, usually caffeine and anti-inflammatory is, is enough for a headache, but not generally a migraine. Unless you, like, unless, in my case, if I catch it super early, um, then it will. But I, But it's rare that I ever get it that early. Yeah, my doctor told me caffeine was good for migraines, too. That that's where I started doing it because um, when I had migraines years ago, she was like, "Drink, uh, drink a cup of couple cups of coffee, or you know, and and then take your whatever, and then lay down and see if that helps." And it does. It's interesting. Your pharmacy makes the best meds for migraines, and they ship it to you if you want to try it. What do you mean they make the mess, best meds? For your pharmacy makes meds for migraines? Huh. I don't think a migraine happens without pain. <laughs> that's the thing. Migraines, that's their whole thing. It's very painful and it's extremely like... A migraine is different from a headache, and a lot of people will have a headache and think it's a migraine. Yes, headaches can be painful, but migraines are where you cannot even open your eyes because the thought of light hitting your eyes like makes you want to die, and sounds and everything. You have to lay perfectly still. That's a migraine when you are like completely bedridden and out, and have to like keep your eyes closed, keep everything quiet you know, stay still, not move around. That's the migraine. That's what I know as a migraine. Um, I've had milder migraines where I was able to sit up and like look at a very dimly lit like iPad or well, in my case, just a tablet, but it's rare. Most of the time I need perfect darkness and my head is usually pounding so bad. Um, yeah, I've, I've vomited from migraines uh, a couple of times. Not often though, not often, just a couple of times there was, um, but most of the time migraines knock you for a loop because otherwise it wouldn't be a migraine. I mean, if you, if you weren't in severe pain of some sort, whether it is visually or just your head or, you know, sound or whatever it is, usually they knock you for a loop. Because a headache is just a headache where your head is pounding and your head hurts and you're irritable because your head hurts and you just don't want to be bothered because your head hurts. That's a headache. Migraine usually is is, is like next level. <laughs> yeah, migraine, I don't want to eat. I don't want to do nothing. I don't care if Lady Gaga came into my bedroom to sing me a song. I'd tell her to shut the F up and get out if I have a migraine. <laughs> you know what I mean? And she's my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, I can't move either. Like, movement makes my head just like... It's like that... Do you ever watch the movie... Um, this is what it reminds me of when I have a migraine. Do you ever watch the movie Space Camp? I'm sure everybody's seen that movie. If not, you need to see it. It's a pretty cool movie. Um, where they, they were in the thing to teach them how to fly the space shuttle. And they were holding on to that thing. And it was making that noise. Anytime they moved in a certain direction, it would go... Ch -ch 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 and it would like lock them in that weird sound. That's what happens to my head if I move it. I get that like, oh, that twinge when I would move my head to it would be like, okay, can't do it that way. Can't move my head. You know, it's like, it's that, it just, you, you just know it's wrong <laughs> to move your head. And yeah, I can't do it. Some of them aren't like that. Some of them I can move my head. I just need to be in a dark room, but... But yeah, migraines suck. I used to get them. I would get them at least once a week. Sometimes they would last two and three days. Uh, varying degrees, though, over those two and three days. They would, you know, some sometimes it was more tolerable where I could actually eat and get up. But it wouldn't last very long and I'd be back down. But they've put me on all kinds of meds. They've done all kinds of stuff. 
And what I discovered was when I had Cushing syndrome, I have a tumor in my pituitary and that tumor was turned on at some point in my life and it released a lot of uh, weird hormones which messed with my body and caused all kinds of problems, caused my adrenal glands to swell up. I had all kinds of issues. Um, and one of the things it gave me was these stupid migraines. But on the plus side, what it did give me was like, I don't know what happened, but I wish that this part of it that I'm about to tell you would come back because it was the best. Everything else sucked, but this part was the best. I had super hyper focus and I had the, I had the ability to do things and have the, have more drive than I ever had in my entire life. And I'm a fairly driven person, but during the time I had Cushing syndrome is when I built my business, my cleaning business up and had all the girls working for me and was making a lot of money and was working insane hours because my brain, it was almost like it was always on. And, and I know this is what it's from. I've read all about it. Doctors have told me that it's because the hormones in my brain were like feeding certain areas of my brain that were doing bad things to my body. But it, that was one of the benefits because I felt like I could do anything. I mean, anything. And it was great while it lasted, but then it didn't. <laughs> and after, after my Cushing's went into remission, that slowly went away. I mean, it didn't, obviously it didn't completely go away. I mean, it, that, that part of it where it was built up went away, but I went back to like normal and it was just really weird. It was the most odd thing that I couldn't explain for nothing. And I knew what it was from because it was almost instantaneous. And then when they discovered I had Cushing's, I'm like, and I learned about what it was and how the pituitary was putting all these chemicals into my brain, which is causing different things in my body. I'm like, well, that's the only explanation for it because how could this be happening? How could I, and I, it was a noticeable marked difference. Like I knew it. It's almost like that, like when you, like that movie Limitless, it was like that. It was like my brain, I took a pill and I just was awake for the first time in my life. And it was amazing. I could do anything. My brain could think clearly. It was amazing. And then that was for several years. I was like that. And it was remarkable. And when I watched that movie Limitless, I was like, that's, that's it. That's what I felt like, kind of. Not exactly, obviously. But I felt much more focused. And it was like a light bulb had turned on in my brain. And then when the went into remission and the tumor stopped producing hormones, it just went away. Not like that, but it went away very gradually, quickly, gradually, over like six months. I started to feel worse. It's very interesting. My body does a lot of interesting things. But that's what made me realize that there are a lot of illnesses out there that do things to your body that you don't even realize and that they don't even, might even not talk about, especially when it comes to things that have to do with the chemicals in your brain. It's remarkable. Obviously, people know about different mental issues and that causes chemical, you know, that ha you have chemical imbalances that causes imbalances that causes like bipolar and this and that and this and that. But it's weird that something can cause a good thing in your brain. It's very, very weird. Yeah, we have a, a Facebook group. Um, if you need the link to it, let me know because if you join you join the group now, I'll, when I go to look at all the photos, I'll uh, I'll uh, accept anybody that you know requests to join right then and there, and then we'll go through all the photos together, and I'll put them all down on a piece of paper and do the you know it takes about 10, 15 minutes at the end of the live at the end of the class. And I just get all the photos and do the thing right then and there. So if you need the link, let me know and I'll put it in the chat. You passed out at Hobby Lobby? Goodness, you were excited about some sales, weren't you, girl? <laughs> I'm just kidding. That sucks. I'm glad you're all right. You were dehydrated. That happened to me once. 
I didn't pass out, but I came, I like almost passed out. I felt myself going like into that dark pass out kind of thing. And it was after a really long night of drinking. And I went to the hospital and they said, uh, you're dehydrated and have a lot of alcohol in your system. That's why you're feeling that way. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Well, I hope that you drink more water and I hope they made you feel better by giving you some fluids. Okay, I'll get the group link for you. Uh, usually Nightbot posts it, but I will grab it and hopefully uh, this link works for you. You can click on that. You were alone? Oh, crap. That's even worse. I hope somebody found you in a timely fashion or it happened in front of somebody. You lose your vision with migraines? I've not lost my vision. I felt like I've lost my hearing. I think maybe because, well, I think that was because like I had a, like a really weird tinny ring in my ear one, during one migraine and I thought I was like deaf. I could barely hear anything. And I remember Chris kept asking me a question and I was just like, everything he said sounded like me, 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 like that. And I was like, God, I can't even hear you. Well, I don't drink really now because of my health problems, but... I mean, I'm not forbidden to drink. I mean, and I will partake, like, on special occasions. But I used to go out, like, every couple of weekends with my friends. And we'd go drinking. And sometimes I would drink a little excessively and have a good time. And, you know, it happens. Most of it was, you know... I haven't drank like that in a couple of years. Well, we did have a New Year's Eve party, and but we were home and... That wasn't even that bad. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. See, I don't, I've never had vertigo, but when I get a migraine, I find it very hard to like, not always, and it's only probably happened like maybe four or five times where I would try to stand up and I would feel like, I don't know, like my head would feel like, Everything was going whoosh, 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 whoosh. and like when I would try to walk, I felt like I was walking to like one side or the other. A lot of times I think I was going to the right, I feel like to the bathroom or something. I'd have to like grab on and I don't know if that's vertigo or not, or if that's, I hope I never actually get vertigo because that scares me. I have a friend, I have a friend who had vertigo and she was telling me about it and I was just like, no. That that me that's like uh, uh oh do you Debbie so like if you have vertigo is that something you always have or is that something that once you get it you're prone to getting it a lot or like how does that work that's the only thing I don't you know. That's the thing that I don't, I didn't, I don't think I asked my friend about. So I know she had it, but I was under the impression that when, you know, you have it and it kind of just goes away like a cold. And then I heard somebody else talk about how they are on medication for vertigo as well. And I thought, oh, is this a chronic thing? So once you have it, it'll always come and go. Is that what you're basically saying? But Sandy, you're saying you had it once. So it depends, I guess, then. You could have it just once, or it could be like a thing that you just develop and it comes and goes. It has to do with, yeah, I know it has to do with the inner ear. Well, anyway, let me pick a card. So if everybody's ready and got their paper, you do not have to use a paper as large as mine. You can use a piece of cardstock. Even use a piece of copy paper if that's all you have. But I like to use watercolor paper. You can use a piece of cereal box or any kind of like food box. Those are usually a good weight. You could gesso it, you know, open it up, cut it into a piece that's like, you know, use the reverse side, gesso it and use that. I mean, it works great for that. The bed spins. Oh, oh yeah, no. 
That I don't. That's like when you're drunk and the bed spins. That's the worst. Is there an over over the counter pill for tinnitus? I didn't know that. I know somebody else that has tinnitus. I I have a, a constant noise in my ear. It it kind of gets it, it kind of comes and goes in a sense. It's kind of always there, but it gets louder and and dimmer like every you know like in waves. I don't know. So like for a month I'll only hear it a little bit and then other times I hear it loud and it's from the fact that I have blockages in my carotid arteries on both sides. I have 60% blockage. We found that out after I had my stroke. Uh, my mini stroke. It wasn't like a stroke stroke. It was just a mini stroke. Um, when was that? A year ago? A little over a year ago? And it was, it was, no, we found that out when I had anemia because that's when it got, that's when I started to hear the sound and I was doing research on anemia and anemia could cause you to have this sound called a brewy, um, that, but it could go away after your anemia is cleared up. Well, mine never went away. And so the doctor, my doctor was like, let's go have that checked out. And sure enough, I have blockages. That's what made me think of the, the mini stroke because that's probably why I had a mini stroke. Maybe, I don't know, but. Yeah, I couldn't imagine having like bed spins because even, all right, so even if you have bed spins, if you, if you have um, vertigo, that's what you're talking about, I'm assuming. Even if, see the bed spins are the, like, like when I, I can only reference to when I, you know, would go out drinking and have fun with my friends, like in my 20s and stuff, you know, go out drinking, you come home, you're drunk or whatever, and you go to sleep or lay down and the room starts to spin, I immediately have to stand up because I can't stand that feeling. Like some people can just lay there and sleep through it. I know if I don't stand up and start walking around or stand up and kind of like get a grip and stay awake for a while longer, that that's not gonna go away. So, or I'll throw up. So I can imagine if you have vertigo, if you lay down, you got the bed spins, but if you sit up, you've got vertigo. So either way you're screwed. I don't think it goes away. I mean, I can imagine just being barfing all over the place. You had a heart attack in 2011. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And had heart surgery in December. This past December? Hi, Tanya. All right, I'm picking a card because I keep getting distracted. Sorry. Use blue. So any way you want to use blue. Ooh, and you know what? Where's, is Trucker Janie in here? She sent me a happy mail. Hold on a second. I forgot because I opened it because I, it literally sat in my purse for like a week because I was coming. Sometimes I'll come in from going to the store or the doctor or whatever, and I'll get the mail out of the mailbox, shove it in my purse. Well, if it's something small, like a little envelope like this, I didn't see it. My purse is huge. And then I noticed it the other day and opened it. And she sent me a dry erase marker for when I write the prompts up here, which is cool. I was using a Sharpie and taking some alcohol and wiping it off. But she also sent me a really cute little ATC. So thank you, Miss Janie. I appreciate it. And it was very thoughtful of you to send me this. So now I can write this up here so everybody can see. And I can just wipe it with my rag. So, uh, so use blue. That means use anything you want. You want to tack down, you know, glue down some blue paper. You could do that. You want to paint with blue paint. Use blue watercolor. Use blue anything you want that's blue that you, you know, can use as an art supply of some sort. You could do that. So let's see. What do I? Ooh, you know what I have? I never use these. This is the time. When it's like, I'm, I'm trying to use more things that I've had for a while that I don't use enough of. And that it's because like some things I've gotten like at Tuesday morning years ago or at the creative reuse. And it's like, I got it, but I'm not like, I don't know. Like I don't find uses for some things. This is one of them. The distress stains. Like I can put some color on with some of that because I have it. 
I hardly use it, although it's kind of beating up a little bit on this uh, gesso and watercolor paper, but that's okay, because it'll leave cool puddles. And let's see, is there another color blue in here? Um, no, I guess I only have the one color, I guess. Oh no, here's another color. This one's not even open yet. I remember I would gotten a ton of these at Tuesday morning, like years ago, um, and never used them. And then I found a couple at the Creative Reuse. Yeah, this is from Tuesday morning, right here, and I never even opened it. Because I like would see it on a YouTube thing, and then I'd see it, into, or I'd get it, and then I'd look it up on a YouTube thing, and I'm like, oh, well... It's for like adding color and stuff to things. And, and there was very limited stuff about what people would do with it, I guess. I guess these weren't like their best seller, which is why they ended up in Tuesday morning. Because it was kind of just like they had the distress stain, but then they had the distress ink. Hi, Kelly. How you doing? So one of the things you could do is, I know you can make like splats. So maybe I'll do some splats. That's the one good thing you could do with it. <laughs> I don't know much about these, but I'm just throwing down color. It don't matter. Let me make some splats with the other color. The splats are kind of fun. Do I need to get markers out or, or paint? You can do whatever you want that's blue. It doesn't matter what it is. So if you want to use markers, you can use markers. You can use paint. There's a couple of big puddles here. I'm just going to... So it doesn't take nine years to dry. Although I do want to leave my splats. And if you're new to mixed media mashup, don't get married to anything you see on your page because nine times out of ten, you're going to, I mean, the whole point of it is to layer something over top of it and kind of cover it up. So don't be like, oh, I really like that. And then try to go around it because that's kind of not the point. It's just, you're supposed to just act like the next card that we pull, act like your page is blank and you're just going for it. This way at the end, you see bits and pieces of what was behind there, but nothing, you shouldn't be able to really see anything significant. I seen that you did, Debbie. It's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm more and more increasingly pissed that this happened to this glass thing because I really like this glass piece. It was perfect size and now I have to get rid of it or I'll just duct tape it and duct tape the other side and say screw it <laughs> for now. Hi Raphelia. Sure you can work along if you, if you want to. Um, if you work along with us we're on the first card so you're not gonna, uh, you know, you'll be able to catch up fairly quickly. Just grab yourself some sort of piece of paper. If it's a, if you if it's your first time, I would work on something small, like a small piece of watercolor paper. I like watercolor paper or any kind of mixed media paper, even a piece of cardstock, a piece of a box of a cereal box, anything. Throw some gesso on it, and then our first card. Dry your gesso real quick. And our first card was use blue. That means use blue anything. Use blue paint, blue chalk, blue spray. You know, break open a Smurf and smear it around. Whatever's blue that you got that you want to use. And then afterwards, when we're all done picking between eight and ten cards, about takes about two hours. Um. I'm going to have you put it in, join our group. If you're not in our group, I'm going to put the link. I just put the link in the chat. Join that group. 
and I'll accept your 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 join uh, your I'll accept your membership as soon as I go in um, at the end of the thing and you'll put your picture up of what you did tonight and then you'll be entered in a drawing and you'll have two chances to win we'll do a drawing tonight and then we'll do a drawing next week because there are some people that can't work along with us tonight who will work along with us over the next 24 hours or so and put their picture in the group and then I do that drawing next week but you'll still be in that drawing if that makes sense so you get two chances to win Uh, what happened to my glasses? I stupidly forgot not to lay my little mini iron down on here when it was hot and let it sit there for more than, if you let it sit for, you know, a minute, three minutes, five minutes, that's fine. But it was sitting there like 10 minutes and it cracked my glass and I should have known better. But for some reason I laid it down meaning to pick it back up, but never did. And yeah, I broke my glass. I'll never do that again. I was pissed because I really like when it was just cracked here, it was fine. But then all of a sudden it cracked all the way to here. And so it's this whole corner is broken off, but I think I'm just going to duct tape it for now because eventually, as soon as I can afford to get the piece of glass for, because I have like the, the door, I have the two cabinets that I'm going to be putting underneath of it to hold it up. I just need the glass, but the glass costs like $165. And right now I can't afford to do that. So I'm like, well, then I'll just wait. My ass will just wait. Yeah, don't lay anything hot. I mean, if you lay it down for like a minute or two, you're fine. Just don't leave it sitting there. And you can you you can iron on it. You can put hot things on it, like your hot glue gun and stuff like that. It's just that that was a large surface, like this big, laying on it for a long period of time. So... It was on there for quite a while. Like if you go back and watch that live stream, it was sitting there for a long time for a good 15, 20 minutes. So that you don't want to do, but you know, normal heat wear and tear, you can even iron right on the glass and do this. Just don't let it sit in one spot for, you know, more than a couple minutes, like two minutes. We're only on the first prompt. Use blue. I'm going slow. because We got some new people. So, I'm going to dry this a little with my heat gun. Hi, Angie. Oh, I forgot to put a number here so you'll know what one we're on. We're on number one. Use blue. Oh, that's true, Rome. You know, I never thought of um, using some E6000 to glue it back together. That's a good idea. I'll try that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some E6000 on it. And uh, there is a spot where it's like cracked like that. But I should, this is like cracked all the way down. Like it's broken off. So I'd have to put E6000 in between it. But here, where it just has those couple of hairlines, I could throw some over top of that or on the other side of it. And hopefully that'll hold it. But really, it's just this major crack here um that's broken and i bet you maybe i'm able to fix it at least make it better i mean i don't know if it i don't know i'll figure i'll try to figure something out for the time being until i can find something else or until i can afford to get the bigger shoes But I still have the cabinets in the boxes. I haven't even taken them out and put them together yet. The Alex drawer cabinet type of things that are going to go one on one side, one on the other to hold up my new kind of homemade desk that I'm making so that I can have the glass on top with the lights underneath and everything, you know, in the little, because it's got, it's a door that has like 
it's like a French door, so it's have like a whole bunch of glass panels in it, like the little, like this big glass panels, a whole bunch of them. And I'm gonna put things in the little recesses of the of the door, and potentially decoupage the inside of where the glass is, and then put a couple little things, and then put the little lights in it, so it'll be cute. Oh, it did work? Okay, cool. I'll have to give that a try. Maybe I'll do that um, the next free minute I have. <laughs> Hi, Joy. Hi, Angela. Fancy Dancy, what's that? We're on the first one. And hi, Barbara, by the way. if I don't get some of these puddles up so I'm going to alleviate some of these puddles because they're going to be here all day You're a smarty pants. Oh, I didn't see where you said he he just kidding. <laughs> All right, Cheryl. We are doing a, um, a mixed media kind of uh, game slash class where I pick, and welcome by the way, Armor Fabric, is it Fabric, Fabric Quest, Fabrics, Fabrics, right? Um, now I'm getting it. Ugh. Um, anyway, we do this every week, usually between eight and nine o'clock lately. It's been a little more early. We used to do it more at nine o'clock. I'm doing it just a little earlier. Um, but anyway where I have these cards and I pick them and whatever's on the card, like the first one we picked was use blue. We just use blue, whatever. If you have blue paint, blue ink, blue, whatever, you put it down on your page, however you want. And we do this for eight to 10 cards. And then at the end, everybody takes a picture, posts it in our Facebook group, which I'll put the link again. Uh, here's a link to it. If you want to join it, you can join it now and work with us right now. And I'll go into the group. I'll put the I'll put it on the screen so you can see me going through the group and see me going through all the pictures, um, like live. And I will write down everybody that did their project when it was all done. They took a picture of it and put it in the group. And I'll I'll go through and write down everybody's name and draw. Okay, Shazzy. And I do that drawing tonight. And then for people like Shazzy just said, she'll post hers tomorrow. If you can't work on it right now, if you, as long as you post it by it within 24 hours, you will be in another drawing. Um, you won't be in the drawing for tonight, but you'll be in a drawing for next week. It's a lot of fun. You should give it a try. It's not hard. It's very easy. 
and we usually end up with stuff that's like layered with lots of different stuff and it you know it can look like a hot mess but you know it's not really about the outcome as much as it is about just having fun and playing and in the process you'll learn something you know if you're unless you're you know i don't know what your skill level is for mixed media but for most people that are beginners it helps them learn how to layer it helps them learn what things go with what things and sometimes you'll i'll pick a card and it won't go at all with what we got and or a color you might pick might not go and you know you learn what does and doesn't work as far as mixed media goes well thank you <clears throat> i'm going to pick another card the next card because i think most everybody should be done adding blue add lines so that's our next card is to add lines and what we can do that with is anything you can use a credit card dip it in some paint which i like to do and then add make lines like this you can draw lines, you can use, um, ooh, you know what I can use? I just realized I have paint in here. So I can add lines with a fine liner with paint in it. You can add lines with a marker. You can add lines with a paint marker, with a watercolor marker, with an alcohol ink marker, anything that you can add a line with, add a line with. Awesome, Karen. I'm going to add some lines with black paint. And hopefully, did this start to... I might need a pin. Did we get a clog? It, probably not clogged. It's probably the paint inside is probably getting... A, what do you call it? Gloopy. It's been in here for a while. Hmm. I bet you there's a gloop in the paint. I wonder what's the problem. Oh, there it goes. Anyway, and you can make like. Why is my paint not coming? There must be a glob in this paint. There's got to be, and that's what's getting stuck every now and again. Feel like it though i don't understand what's getting stuck there shouldn't be anything getting stuck maybe i just need to blow it out like there we go whatever it was now is unstuck <laughs> there we go it's the first time that's ever got stuck It's fun to draw with these though. And most of the time you only see little bits of this by the time um, we're done with our whole page. You'll only see bits and pieces of these first layers. I have white too. I could do some white. This one stuck too. Come on. Paint boogers, I know. Ooh, this has got some crustiness to it. I'll try to dump that into the garbage. Yeah. 
Hmm. Yeah, this fine liner might need to be soaked and redone because it like it's definitely got some dried white glops. See, I don't care for fine liners. That other one didn't have all this going on. It had a little paint booger in it or whatever, but didn't have all this dried stuff in it. I'm not I'm not as big of a fan of the fine liners. They're too expensive to be clogging up like this and having dried spots in them like that. I feel those cheap bottles are so much better and they do the exact same thing and they're way cheaper so that if one gets all gross you just throw it out they're like a, less than a you can get like 10 for like two dollars whereas these bottles are 10 bucks a piece and they're to me not worth it not if all like i didn't have all this going on with the other bottle yeah, it's like seriously plugged up. Okay, let's see if this is any better. But that really was plugged up worse. It may not stay unplugged for very long. This is 68. There we go. Honestly, these metal, this metal tip to me isn't as nice as, as the one from the black paint I feel works better. Just my opinion. I've always felt that the fine liners aren't worth the money. I have, um, do I have them in my Amazon links? Let me go look. I think I have the bottles with the needle tip in my Amazon link, maybe. Let me look. If not, I can find them for you online. No, they're not in there. I'll find them. I'll find them while you guys are still working on your lines. Put them in there. Here you go. I'll show you real quick. Or I'll put the link. Let me put the link. I don't want that kind of link. There we go. You get a 30 pack of them for 10 bucks. Here's the link. And you can get a 30 back of them for 10 bucks. And you can put all different colors in them and make all different color fine liners. I like them for glue, as long as it's not like Aileen's glue, which is too thick um, for that type of bottle, the needle tip. But it's good for glossy accents. You can use it 
um, with any of your thinner glues. Um, it works great. You can make uh, thinned out alcohol ink with it and, you know, because like sometimes alcohol ink is strong and you can make a very thin color by putting them in those needle tips. You can, I put I, Aileen's in one of these bottles, which has a, a thicker tip on it. Um, but I, I don't, I never use like the original bottle of most glues because they're too big. Bye, Cheryl. Yeah, I added it. I added it to my list, and it's also the link is right there. So that'll it, that link that I gave you will also go through my actual influencer thing. So if you use that link or go to my list, either way, it's the same. Okay. Yeah, Fluffy just wanted to uh, come in and make trouble. <laughs> Hi, Millie. You made DIY washi, Kellyanne. That's cool. I love DIY washi. You know what I like using for DIY washi? That uh, paper tape. It's like the med here. It is the medical paper tape. I like this um, like more than the masking tape, even because it's thinner and it's more. If I can get my nails to work, where is the edge? Oh, I can't find the edge either. Am I going insane or are my nails just not working? Oh yeah. There it is. It's like, you know, it's like more translucent. It's still sticky. Um, not as sticky as some masking tapes, but as sticky as some other masking tape. It's like, it's stickier than washi tape, but not quite as sticky as like really sticky masking tape. Because some of the masking tapes are not as sticky. Um, but anyway, it works really good for washi because it's it takes uh, mediums really well and it's thin. And you can get it at like dollar stores and stuff. It's probably not as cheap as actual masking tape. But so far the prompts were add blue and then add lines. That's what we're on now is adding lines. Yeah, it does cost a little more. I mean, I get it from... Dollar General, and I can get two rolls for like two fifty, three dollars, something like that, which isn't bad. This doesn't smell like the kind 
No, this does not smell like the kind of tape. I know what you're talking about. That regular medical tape does have a smell to it. This stuff doesn't. Regular, like the regular kind of like bandage tape that's not like that. The thicker kind does have a smell to it, but that doesn't. But it doesn't matter. Even if it did, you're going to slap paint on it and you're not going to smell it anymore. <laughs> it's going to smell like paint. So either way, it's not going to matter. Hi, Amber. And if ever we pull a card and, and you don't have something that it says to use or whatever, just skip it or improvise with something else. You know, just choose something similar or you just skip it. You don't have to do it, obviously. Oh, really? Tape has zinc in them? Hmm. I didn't know that. That's okay if it's half plain because guess what? We're going to be adding way more layers on it, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, we're a bunch of tape sniffers. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick another card unless anybody has any objections. And we'll see what number three is. At, whoops, I grabbed two cards. Add strips of paper. Add strips of paper. Now, for this, you can use some painty papers, book pages. Any kind of paper, a magazine, just take rip strips of it and glue it down. I have strips of paper already because of cutting, uh, keeping my scraps. I always keep my scraps if they're painty or colorful. And a lot of them end up being strips like this because I'll cut them off the edge when I'm doing making a book page out of it. So I keep them and I make them into embellishments or in this case, we'll glue them down. Um so whoa or if you have scraps you can rip them into shreds you know i like ripped edges most of the time but i'm just going to use these because i already have them so i'm not going to worry about the ripped edge it doesn't matter but if you rip them they they usually look nice when you rip them too so either way works so I'm just going to start slapping a bunch of these down. And I don't usually, any one particular prompt, I don't cover the entire page. I'll just put, you know, a few here and there. So whether or not it completely, my page is never covered until like towards the, 
last few prompts, then it'll start to seem co covered. But that's also how you make it so that some of the stuff from the back will show through. If you don't, every layer, you don't completely cover your page. And you leave some space to see what was behind it without, I mean, obviously I don't do it on purpose. I don't purposely try to hold on to anything. But I also don't purposely try to cover up every ounce of my page. strips Good enough. <coughs> Are you eating your glue? Does it taste good? <laughs> That's a meal that'll stick to your ribs. Oh, sorry, Credit. I didn't see your question. Um, they're just prompts that I made up. I, uh, over time, I added more to them, but I've just made them up years ago, a couple years ago.
Well, Credit, if you're in our group, you can download the prompts and take a bunch of, just make a bunch of cards with some cardstock like this and then cut the prompts out and glue them to the cards. Um, or you can go through the trouble like my first batch. I did that and cut them to the cards and then I uh, laminated it. Um, so you can do that too. So um, you can go into the group in the file section and find all the prompts there. And you can download them or just cut and paste them into a Word document or something and print them out. Yeah, there's instructions on how to play a game too with the cards um, where you can do it by yourself and use like a timer or you can play it with a friend and use it and use a timer. The instructions are all in there too along with the cards you'll find an instruction sheet that you could print out on how to play the game. And you can kind of also, you know, adjust the game to whatever your scenario is, whether you're doing it in a group or alone, or if you have a different idea, you can do whatever you want, really. Welcome back. Did everything come out all right? Miss Trucker Janie, thank you for my marker and my a my ATC that you gave me. I showed it earlier. Um, your letter, <laughs> I got it in the mailbox like a week ago and put it in my purse. And if it, it always does that with little envelopes, and then I forgot it was in there because I got it before your other package that I opened before the auction. I think I did. Um, so this was in my purse all that time. So thank you for this because now I can just erase it. Does anybody need me to wait or can I go to the next card? If you're still working, just let, just don't be afraid to just tell me, wait a minute, not done yet. You added four lines, so you did two steps in one. What do you mean? You did just four lines, so you were able to do your paper quicker? Is that what you mean? Oh, four. Oh, I got you. <laughs> four strips of paper. So those were your lines. <laughs> One more minute. I will wait one more minute and I'm going to go grab something real quick. I've got M&M's. I feel like having some chocolate. Oh, you added paper strips for once. <laughs> 
Well, that worked. I have cheese puffs too, I just wasn't in the mood for them. I haven't had chocolate in several days. Alright, we're going to pick the next card. Numero four. Add squares. Now, you can add squares using paper, using paint, using whatever you want. I think, uh, let's see, maybe I'll use paper, because I have some paper that I can easily make squares out of just by taking and cutting off pieces of the paper. Square, square, square. And that'd be a perfect square, but just a square of some sort. And I said this earlier in the, the beginning, but some of you might not have heard me. Uh, I wasn't feeling good for the past few days, so uh, I'm not going to be getting the auction stuff out until Monday because of not feeling well and obviously... I can't rush to get it done by tomorrow, not with doing mixed media mashups. So I'm going to work on it over the weekend because I pretty much was in bed all week, all, well, past couple of days. I slept a lot. Let's just put it that way. That's a square, square enough. But I did get my Zibit store opened. And everything transferred over. However, there is stuff still in my Etsy. Just one quantity of each thing. And the rest with a link that, that directs everybody to my Zibit store if they want more than the one thing. So you can still buy from my, my uh, Etsy if you want to. Um, but you can go to my Zibit store, which... I should actually fix the, after I get these glued down, I'll fix the link in my Nightbot so it directs people to the Zibit, not the Etsy. That would be smart, and that wouldn't take but a second to do. So, we will do that.
All right, the squares are on. Hi, Cindy. quick to update the Zibit store while you guys are finishing up your uh, who's a what's it There we go. I switch that so I shouldn't see any more links for the Etsy store. Hi, Lisa. How have you been? Hi, Stacy. Filling my face with M and M's. I'm dropping them on the floor too. Hmm. Hi, Adel. Why are you saying hi to me, Shazzy? Oh, <laughs> no, I said never mind. She was saying say hi to Stacy Ward, and I thought she was saying hi to me. And I just saw that Stacy Ward was in here, and I stupidly still didn't realize. I was like, "What, Shazzy? Why are you saying hi to me again? I know you're here." <laughs> hi, Melissa. Number three was um add strips of paper. And then number four was add squares, but you didn't have to add square paper. You can add, you can paint squares, you can stamp squares, I don't know, whatever you want. Oh, sorry to hear that. Why were you in the hospital? I'm glad you're feeling better. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Frankie. Does anybody need me to wait a minute before we move on? Awesome, Stacy. That's cool. A night off is good.
intestinal stuff. I hope it's not Crohn's disease, Lisa. Oh, sorry, Spanky. I must not have been paying attention. I missed a couple people, I'm noticing. <laughs> What'd they figure out with your stuff, Spanky? Yep, we do this every Wednesday. Either at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I'm kind of shifting around to the 8 o'clock time, unless I need to do it at 9. Just because I find that some people say that it's better for them to start at eight o'clock because if it's on if they're on the east coast and that starts at nine and if i start at nine from the east coast and that's ten o'clock so uh oh ulcerative colitis uh, yeah that's no good either i'm sorry to hear did you have to have surgery is that why you were in the hospital or or just a flare-up Well, and you'll fit right in, Missy. Because junk food in your craft room, that's that's what we do. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that sucks, thank you. Yeah, I had some polyps in my stomach, and they removed those. I also have a hernia as well. They fixed it. This is the weird thing about some hernias. My hernia did not hurt me. Some, obviously, a lot of people get, you know, they feel their hernias or whatever. It hurts them. It causes problems. I had a hernia for years. And when I had my surgery for, when I had cancer and, the, and, the, and they were removing a lot of the severe Crohn's, they fixed the hernia. Um, but... All it did was come right back in the same place, like within a year. So it didn't do anything. I still have it, but I don't it I don't feel it. It don't hurt me or nothing. And I'm not gonna go through surgery to fix it again. No point. And it's funny for years. I didn't know I had it, but I knew I had it, if that makes sense. I knew there was a spot where I can feel on my stomach that was, like, weird. And I thought, oh, I bet you that's some sort of hernia. And I think it did hurt me initially, like, years ago. But it wasn't, like, a blinding pain or anything. It was just aggravating, and then it kind of went away. But I could still feel the spot. So, eventually, the pain went away, but... And it was never, like, that painful to begin with. Yeah, like, you've got one of those hernias that's, like, you know, you have to get fixed because it's making you sick and whatever. Yeah, that's not what mine was at all. And th I'm glad mine never got like that. I have enough problems. I need that, too. Yeah, that's what mine was. A hiatal hernia or whatever. But it was mild. Very mild. And like I said, they fixed it, and then it came back. <laughs> and I'm not bothering getting it fixed again. I'll wait until, if I ever need another surgery, hopefully not, knock on wood, then I'll let them fix it. Um, Willow has a hernia. Um, my dog, she has a little bit of fat that sticks out through, I mean, obviously it's covered by the skin and the fur. But it's typical of some puppies to develop a hernia. Um, when she goes to get fixed, which is going to be hopefully soon... Um, they'll fix it then, but it's not dangerous. Hers is not very big. It's little. So it's, they said, don't worry about it. Cause I called them about it. They said, it'll be fine to wait until she has, um, until she gets fixed. It doesn't hurt her or anything. Yeah. There are different degrees to hiatal hernias. Obviously bigger ones are more painful. And depending on where they are, too. 
mine's in a spot that's not painful, thankfully. Well, I hope they get it fixed for you. And when they say, like, after surgery, don't lift anything, don't do anything, really don't, because you'll end up with it again. See, mine you couldn't see. I can only feel it, kind of feel where the skin was like, I don't know, I can't explain it, but there was no like lump sticking out of my skin. I could just feel where there was like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, I can't even explain it. Like, it felt like the skin was thin and it felt like there was a weird spot. I could just feel, but it wasn't like a lump or anything. I just knew that it was probably a hernia. Hi, Esther. Hi, Lisa. Oh, that doesn't sound fun either. Yeah, that's how I knew Willow's was a hernia because I was able to push the little bit of fat that came through it back in. <laughs> and I, cause I was like, at first I was kind of feeling it and I felt it with my hand and I kind of pushed on it and I noticed it went away and I'm like, what the heck was that? <laughs> and then it came right back like after a day and I said, okay, that's gotta be a hernia. Yeah, that's where I think, that's where it's common, I think, for babies and stuff. And, like, for even dogs, that's kind of where hers is, where her belly button would be. Like, a little bit above it on Willow. So, that's, like, where her, you know, where her umbilical cord was. And that's where dogs get it. But some dogs get it really big and they have to be fixed right away. But hers is real small. So she's not really at risk of having like her intestines come through or anything weird like that. It's just where the fat will come through a little bit. Oh, you were born with one, Sandy? That's crazy. Hmm. Ooh, that's, that does not sound like that would be pleasant. To have one on his weenicle. <laughs> I have a friend whose son was born with literally his heart and lungs outside of his body. Or maybe it was just his heart and one lung or part of his, I don't know, but it was like his, uh, his literal heart was outside of his body. I mean, he's fine now, but how scary would that be? Yep. That's true, Debbie. Plus, see, I know I got mine from, I cleaned houses and I lifted a lot of things all the time. <laughs> Big, you know, heavy buckets of water, vacuum cleaners up and downstairs. So, it, you know, it makes perfect sense. Was, are you talking to me? Carnival around Watertown? Um... I think so, because I was talking about to the, uh, the big, um, um, I was talking about the, um, the, the yard sale thing that, the one that's like miles long or whatever and connects with other states and stuff, that it runs through Watertown, but also there's, I think there's carnivals and stuff there too. Yeah, and the Wilson County Fair, but that's not in Watertown, is it? Or that's not Watertown. Wilson, Watertown is in Wilson County, is it? I think it's, I don't know what county that is, Watertown, but we were separately talking about Wilson County Fair, too. But we were talking about the Wilson County Fair.
Oh, you're driving right now, Janie? Or your husband's driving? All right, let's pick another card. Music book or dictionary papers. So we're going to add music book or dictionary papers. I wish I could, Tanya, but with the way I've been feeling, I'm probably not going to get anywhere. <laughs> I got to take it easy. And plus, I've got so much to do. I don't think I'm going to feel up to going anywhere. I've got a piece of book page over here. I'm going to start with that. And then, see, I'm not going to add too much of that. Because I've already collaged a lot down so far. So I'll just add a few pieces. You don't have either one what? You don't have music paper, book paper, or dictionary paper? Then just grab any kind of paper. Improvise. That's okay. You can just improvise. Let me see, do I have any book paper left? Is there any in here? Oh, wait, music paper. It's got paint on it, but who cares? I already added one piece of it, but I'll add another piece. And that's all I'm really going to do for this. Kind of like the side with gold paint. I'll be fine. I just need to take it easy on my stomach. <clears throat> Hopefully the worst of that is over. And compared to what I've gone through over the past couple years, it's nothing. I'm just not going to be running around going to fairs and all that stuff. <laughs> Plus, I don't really want to spend the money going to a fair. They cost a moolah. All right. They have sea lions at the fair in Tennessee? Oh, man, I would have liked to have seen sea lions. How the hell do they have sea lions? They set up some sort of tank or something? I don't know. I wish they would leave animals away out of like traveling fairs and stuff. I don't feel that that's the best thing for the animals is to be touting around with a carnival type of thing. Yeah, the fair food is really yummy, though. 
I would love some fair food. Yeah. Yeah, I wish they would just leave the animals out of it. I mean, it's one thing, like... To have some local farm animals that can be brought in easily or whatever for a petting zoo. But it's another thing to, you know, take an animal that needs to be near or in water <clears throat> and transport it all the way from probably some coast, you know, some some marine place, you know, like marine land or whatever, or some aquarium and put it through the torture of, I just, you know, I just disagree with that. Used to live in Watertown, New York, or we're talking about Watertown, Tennessee. <laughs> My favorite fair food is cotton candy. However, I have a cotton candy maker. It's a small one, but it makes enough cotton candy for me, and it tastes exactly like the cotton candy from the fair. So, I don't need to go to the fair for that anymore. But my second favorite fair food is probably either funnel cake or pizza. Roasted corn is good, too. I've never heard of Rock the South. I don't know what that is. We have a uh, fanfare here, which most people that like country music know what fanfare is. It's not fanfare anymore. They call it CMA Fest. What's a walking taco? I've never heard of that. I've never heard of elephant ears either. Yeah, cotton candy is my favorite. But I make my own. Hmm. Yeah, that's sad, Tina. It's one thing to have them at the aquarium because they're being rehabilitated or they're unable to be released back into the wild. I, you know, I just think they should stop, stop taking animals for the sake of making money off of them. Rescuing is one thing, but I don't know. It sucks. bag of Fritos with taco stuff in it. Oh, interesting. Well, yeah. I need to make some more what? Cotton candy? Totally. I made some while Kelly was here. We had cotton candy. You can just skip that step, Missy. Don't worry about it. We have plenty of other steps. Your mom is going to be 80 and she wants to go to Chili's. To Gold Star Chili? What's that? What's Gold Star Chili? Is that a restaurant? Well, tell your mom I said happy birthday. Is anybody against me picking another card or is anybody behind and need me to wait a second?
I don't know what Skyline is either. <laughs> Where do you live again, Sandy? You must have totally different restaurants than we do. Sure, you can use newspaper. That works. Newspaper works good. All right, we will pick the next card, numero six. Add paint or ink with a brayer. So just, if you don't have a brayer, you can just use a credit card to scrape it around. use whatever you got so if you could just take a credit card put a couple dots of paint and then just scrape it around you could do that um whatever floats your boat and any colors you want to use doesn't matter I'm gonna use... i'm gonna use some turquoise some green and some yellow let's start with the yellow Oh, you're in Kentucky. That's right above me. And I don't know anything about Somerset, Kentucky. It's a chili place. What does that mean? When you say chili, do you mean like the restaurant Chili's type of thing? I got a spot there that needs to be glued a little bit right here. I need a little glue. I must have missed it. I must have missed it. Oopsie. I'll just add a little aliens. Must have missed that spot. Now you could start with the paint on the side and brayer it up and then roll it on. Or you could do what I'm doing and just take the globs of paint and stick them wherever you feel like having some paint. You would take your ink, depending on what ink you know you you want to use. You can use <clears throat> you can use distress oxide, whatever color you want, and you roll it onto the brayer. And then it's not going to show up much here, but you would roll it onto your page using the brayer. Obviously, it's not going to show up. This color is not going to show up over the paint, but that's what you do. You roll it, and then you roll it onto your page. And that's how you add ink with a brayer. Yeah, you can use a TP roll as a brayer. I think I did that one week, if I remember correctly. Or you can use, like, if you have a rolling pin, like an old cheapy plastic rolling pin, you can throw some paint down and just roll it on. Or if you have like a clay rolling pin, you can use that. Or like I said, just use a credit card and scrape it on.
Tina, they did that temporarily. I don't think they're keeping that name. I think that was just a temporary, like, thing. I don't know what the hell for. It's stupid, but... But, apparently, they were, it was, like, a temporary, like, marketing thing that they were doing. International House of Burgers or something. And it was supposed to stay like that for like a month or two months or so. I don't know what it was, but supposedly it was only supposed to be temporary, at least I think so. Six is right there. Add paint or ink with a brayer. That's true, yeah, you can use a like an, a glass, a bottle, anything round. Yeah, it does seem like a waste of money. It's, I don't know, maybe they were just trying to get people to come in and try their burgers. I don't know. Apparently, they must be struggling if they did something that stupid. Because anytime you see a company do something that's like a major weird or bizarre marketing ploy or, you know, publicity stunt, it usually means that the business is struggling and that's why they did it. So IHOP must be struggling. So I wouldn't be surprised if in the next couple of years you start to see IHOP shutting down. Unless this works, which I doubt it. I think the whole, the whole marketing ploy behind it was to show that they're not just a place that serves pancakes. That they serve like all kinds of foods like a diner does. Burgers and this, that, and the other. Fries, whatever. So that people would come all times a day instead of just like mornings or weekends after you drank. You know what I mean? I think that's what they're trying to do. Whether or not that happens, I don't know. I will say that the, you know, the IHOP that's near me is disgustingly dirty and nasty, and that's probably one of the things they should work on fixing. <laughs> there is one that's downtown Nashville that's that was newer that, like, they opened like six six years ago, five years ago, and they were nice and clean. But I don't know how dirty they are now since they've been open a while. But I don't know. <laughs> Barbara fell asleep. <laughs> Good Lord, woman. You're going to have to work on yours tomorrow. Hi, Kennedy. Yeah, the service is pretty bad. Why do you say the chat has a new look? What do you mean? It doesn't look any different to me. Is YouTube rolling out an upgrade and they started with certain people and they're upgrading something? I don't know. Take a screenshot and post it in the group. I don't know what you're talking about. Mine looks like a hot mess. I added probably too much paint, but that's okay.
did they do an update? I don't know because I haven't seen. All right, I'm gonna pick another card. Numero seven. Cover an area with paint or paste and scratch a design in it. This is gonna be a hard one to write down. Cover area with paint or paste and scratch design that means if you have some thick paint you can use that or you can use like if you have some ink of gold or something thick like paste or whatever you can use a tool like for instance I will use well maybe I'll use some uh, paste stuff. Let's see. Mm. Mm, I like the gold stuff. I like the gold stuff and it dries fast. So you can take some on a palette knife or a credit card and scrape some in a couple areas put a, a you know not super thick but a little bit of a thick thicker take the back of a paintbrush or like I have these little things and I can scrape a little design in it and then when it dries it'll add some extra texture to the page you see what I mean and you can do this if you have thick paint It'll add a little extra texture to your, your uh, page. A little extra texture never hurt nobody. Let me go look at your picture, Kennedy. accept people into the group so in case you hit join I'm gonna accept you now I see Tanya uh, and Raphael Rafaela Rafi Rafaela I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right and Marianne you're all approved and in the group um Uh, oh, I could tell you why, Kennedy. You mean because it's underneath? Are you on a computer? Oh, you're on a phone. That's, that's, that's normal. If you're on a phone, that's normal. I don't know what you, what, what's weird about it. I'm, I'm confused. It looks normal. It looks normal for being on a phone. Hi, Carol. Um, no, you're either going to take some paint or some thick, some thick paint or some paste, texture paste, whatever, modeling paste, scrape it into an area, a couple areas on your page, and then scrape a design into it. So if you got thick paint, that'll work. Um, and like just scrape 
you know, not too, too thick, so it'll take forever to dry, but just enough to be able to scrape a little design and make some texture pop up. I know it had a long thing, so it was hard to type to write it out there. Hi, Misty Dawn. You need gel? <laughs> Hello, Miss Crafty Kitty. Ooh, get some bubbles. I like drying the paste and drying it so much so that you get cool texture bubbles. Some of them will flatten back out, but some of them will stay. Texture pimples. I like it. Good night, Laura. Don't worry about what it looks like. It's okay if it seems ugly. Cut it up into ATCs or postcards and it'll be fine, I promise. Or we still got a couple more prompts to go, so you never know. You can find a way to remedy the situation. <laughs> seems like, oh, it'll get cut up. <laughs> I always cut mine up. Good night, Lisa. I hope you feel better soon. Good night, Pamela. Feels weird. I love it.
Does anybody need me to wait? Or can we move on to the next card? Good night, Kennedy. Mama said there'll be days like this. There'll be days like this, my mama said. <laughs> Thanks for getting that stuck in my head. It's all your fault, Laura. Whoa. That didn't work out. <sighs> now that you have had a nap. <laughs> all right. Then let's go for numero eight. What is numero eight? Use green. Use green. Use green however you want to use green. You can break open Kermit the Frog and smear them all over your page if you want to. Whatever makes you happy. Hmm, let's see, what kind of green do I have? What is this? Pearl turquoise. Ooh, what do I do have? Do I have green in that though? I don't know if I have green. I don't think so. Mm, no. Shoot. What is this from? Hmm. I'll pick green. Green. Oh, I know what I have. Green. Okay. Who's your favorite prompt? Why do you like green, apparently? I'm going to put green through a stencil. I'll use this with some of this. With some of this stuff.
know, you can add some more green. There's different shades of green. If it says add green, add more green. Your lines should probably not even barely be visible at this point. If you've layered like you're supposed to. There's different shades of green. Use another shade of green. Do something different with the green. That's how we get depth. Use different things, different greens. In other words, you're not getting out of it. <laughs> Unless you just didn't have green to begin with. Then you can use a different color. But And yes, that was, well, it's not Inca Gold. It's Metallic Luster, which is exactly the same thing as Inca Gold, except it's called Metallic Lustered. Lustered? No. Metallic Luster? Not Lustered. It doesn't rhyme with mustard. Alrighty. Eight, use green. Seven, cover an area with paint and scratch a design in it. Six, add ink with a brayer. Five, add book paper. <laughs> Four, dictionary paper or music paper. Three, add squares. Two, strips of paper. And one, use blue. That's the song. It's the 12 prompts of mixed media mashup. Every week the lyrics change. <laughs> yeah, Inca Gold, it's the same thing. I like to feel the texture. I like my little zits that I have on there. They're fun to play with. Popping my zits. Hi, Carla. Would you like to pop one of my zits? One of my gold zits? Ooh, do you know what I'm going to have in my Zibit store soon? I'm going to have gold leafing. I'm going to have it in gold, silver, copper, and a variegated color with gold and the green in it, which is really pretty. 
and it's going to be very, very reasonably priced. So everybody will be able to afford it. That's okay. You can use more green. There's all different shades of green. Or use it in a unique way, like use it as a texture paste or cut little shapes and strips of paper as that have green on it or use a green paint pen. All right, I'm gonna pick another card. Number nine. Number nine is add circles. Add circles. See, I already have circles, but guess what? I'm going to add more circles. Never have enough circles. Let's see. Let's add circles. Oh, you know what is a circle? Bubble wrap is a circle. Mm-hmm. It sure is. Let's see. What color do I want to add? Maybe some white. Maybe we'll add a little white circle. Get over here. White. Those are circles. Yeah, my favorite thing to use is bubble wrap too. Love it. It's my favorite. I'll use it everywhere. That's good. Good, 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 good. All right, I need a baby wipe, wipe but they're stuck. Cannot reach them. Where's Janie at today? She was going to pop in, but I haven't seen her.
good. Esther, you're moving your store too? Yeah, you'll like it better. It, I, I like, it, it's easy to move it because you can kind of like zip it will import a lot of the stuff from Etsy for you, but you do have to go into each listing and adjust a lot of it. So it makes it easier to do it, but just keep in mind that you have to still go in and adjust. So it is easy to move from Etsy to Zibit in a sense. Um, it does take a lot of the work out of it for you. A lot of the harder work, but there are still some things you got to check. Um, but you'll like it better because, well, first of all, it's only $10 a month as opposed to, I don't know how much you pay a month for your Etsy store. I mean, I'm not asking you to give me a number. That's your business, but I know that mine is ridiculous and, you know, hundreds of dollars a month get sunk into Etsy and it's frustrating as all get out. Oh, good, Gail. I'm glad you're going to open on Zibit, too. Zibit, yeah, Zibit's much better and cheaper. So, yeah, you'll like it. Etsy is just, they're just getting way too greedy. And they're, they're losing people. They're losing a lot of people. Because I've seen so many shops mention that they are moving to Zibit or their own website. But see your own website. I, I don't necessarily want to deal with the ins and outs of dealing with my own website. Um, at this moment anyway, not until I'm doing, you know, maybe down the line or something. I mean, that's, I already have pinkpoodlecrafts.com is already my website, but you know, I thought about it and I'd rather keep it like I didn't, the whole reason I wanted to only be on Etsy for a short period of time anyway was because of cost. But now that Zibit is only $10 a month and that's all you pay, I'm not as much in a hurry. You know what I mean? Because to me, that's a great price. That's a company that's, you know, doing the right thing and making it so that the sellers are keeping their damn money. Well, no, of course not, because, I mean, Etsy is always, like, Etsy's the first thing that people think of. However, I mean, most of your sales are going to be from your own word of mouth, um, because there's just, Etsy is so overrun with people selling stuff that, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard to go on to Etsy and say, oh, well, I'm going to sell you know, this, that, or the other, earrings, whatever. There's a million people selling the exact same thing. And unless you had something really, really, really unique that nobody else has, you're screwed on Etsy. You know what I mean? Unless, you know, you have either a large following, which I was lucky to have. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not easy to have a store to begin with, but Etsy, like if I only had Etsy to count on and I didn't have my subscribers to, you know, look at my store and buy from my store, I wouldn't make barely anything in sales. Do you know what I mean? I, no matter how much stuff I put up or whatever, I, I, so little of my sales come from actual Etsy. Nine times out of 10, it's a subscriber. I recognize all the names of people that buy from me. So it's kind of, you know, it doesn't matter, but you have more of a chance on some place like Zibit because it's not as flooded. I mean, it's just still a big, it's a big platform. There's still a lot of stuff on there, but you know, I feel like you, you'll have a better chance. And plus, it, you know, it's, it's not as expensive for when you do, I mean, when you do, you know, I mean, there's nothing, if you're just a small, if you're only going to sell a few things, if you're only going to sell a few things, then Etsy, you know what I mean, is, might be a place for you to do that. You know, because if you're not selling as much product or whatever you're selling, it might be worth it to sell on Etsy because, you know, it, it, in my situation, the volume that I have been selling and the fact that I'm selling supplies and I have multiple things in each auction or auction, each listing, I have several 
You know what I mean? Like, it's not worth it for me. But for somebody that only ha only wants to sell a handful of things, then it, it should be fine, you know. But for somebody like me who sells, you know, who potentially sells a lot more, it's not worth it. I don't know if that makes sense, but I mean, you can always start off on Etsy, build a following, and then do what I did, or whatever, or just open it on Etsy, on Zibit, and you know, go from there. And of course, whenever you open your store or whatever, let me know the link and I'll send people to it. I'll, you know, just make sure you let me know ahead of time and give me the link because, you know, my brain doesn't work very well. All right, let's go for number 10. This will probably be the last one for the night. I might pick one or two more just in case somebody else needs it, but stencil. Use a stencil. Let's see. What stencil do I want to use? Levantolis. Yes, yes, yes. Let's do. Um, let's do a little bit of this. Um, what color? I think I want to bring a little pop of like, like that cranberry color that's in there. Because that'll really pop against this background. But I think I want to do it with a smaller old stencil than that. Like maybe my stars. There we go. Oh, I have that's right. I have this star sheet and I have another star sheet too. So we'll do this one. Because this color will pop against that background with the greens and blues. It's a poppin'. But I definitely think if somebody's already selling on Etsy and they're getting pretty good sales, they could pretty easily transition over to Zibit because, I mean, if, if you've got, I mean, most people, if they're doing pretty good sales wise, they'll have repeat customers and all you got to do is let your repeat customers know. And, you know, I might even go as far as sending a postcard out to some of the customers that I either know are not people that are subscribers to my channel. Somebody, I have a, you know, a handful that I've, that, I mean, I always get a few that are from Etsy. I send them a postcard and say, thank you. You had shopped with me on Etsy, you know, look for my Zibit store, yada, yada. And I'll do that when I restock it, um, with the new batch of stuff that I just got so that it's nice and stocked and they maybe some, you know, I'll get some sales over on my Zibit from doing that. You know, there's, there's ways to do things because luckily once you have a sale, you'll always have their address so you can send them and drop them a postcard and say, Hey, you know, I moved. I know you, you know, visited my store and bought something from my store. I recently moved, yada, yada, yada. And then you get another repeat business and, you know, give them a coupon code or what have you. And there you go. There's ways to do things that help boost sales. Mine's already switched. Nightbot just put the link up. So anytime you want to go check it out, there it is.
but ever since yeah etsy got real greedy because they upped their prices in july and they were high enough as it is so i'm just over it because the amount of money that i'm putting out it was gonna have to be where i raised my prices and i really didn't want to do that it's not something i was real happy about so i'd rather keep my prices affordable and move rather than have to up my prices and have people not happy about that i'd rather not have people not happy And that's the thing, like, yeah, even customers are like, you know, not happy about Etsy. And, and Etsy is probably after, especially this July. Bye, Gail. Have a good night. So, you know, especially after July when they increase their prices yet again nobody blames the sellers for wanting to go and Etsy's just you know screwing themselves big time by pushing their customer customers away that's all they're doing is pushing customers away big time and if they were smart they would have lowered prices instead of gotten greedy They didn't. Oh, that's all right, Kellyanne. You can always stencil like black or white like anything with a large pattern you know like this has a fairly large pattern over most of it and then it'll look a hell of a lot better i promise you if you really don't like it take a stencil that has a big design in it like where you'll get a lot of coverage and it makes a difference i've had to do that too and it actually turned out to be awesome looking after i did that sometimes it just don't come out right Sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. There you go. Use a big stencil. Um, do I want to stencil anything else? Or am I done? Mm. Here, for example, I'm going to stick that right in the middle. 
I'm gonna use. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Tinker Quiet. New sponge, my sponge is getting all. Does anybody need any other prompts? Good to me. I'll pick like one more prompt just in case. You can add inspirational words. Inspirational words if you want to. You don't have to, that's an alternate. I'll, I'll put an asterisk on it when I put it in the file so that you know it's a, just an alternate. You don't have to do it it's in case you wanted to add a little something else. I'm not going to add words to mine. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. I think I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got lots of different layers and lots, like I said, you're not going to be able to see much of your background. Like if I look at it, I can see lines. I can see the music paper. I can see lines here. I can see the strips of paper. You know what I mean? I can see the gold. I can see everything if you really look at it. But it shouldn't be like the the first couple layers shouldn't be like predominantly sticking through they should just be way in the background well if you don't post it you can't win and if you're done with yours post it out post it in the group because i'm gonna get the papers for last week's drawing and do that drawing and then I'm going to start looking in the group for this week so let me go get that while you guys are posting your pics okay This week's. Come on, paper. Let me throw yourself here. Okay. So I've got everybody's names in here from last week. Bye, Najami. This is from last week's Mixed Media Mashup, number 67. And the winner for that is Jill Williams. Miss Jill, are you still here? You win number 67. You will get a little prize pack. Oh, dang it. Did I leave that on? Uh, dried up my pen, didn't I? Oh, I hate when that happens. Well, that sucks. Your mom stood there watching you for 15 minutes. No sound. What does that mean? 
What do you mean no sound? You had it muted? <laughs> Okay. All right, Miss Jill. All right, I'm going to go through and write down all the Has everybody got theirs posted in the group? Oh, you wear ear. Oh, I see. So you were wearing headphones and she was just standing there watching with no sound. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, all right. Let me go. I Let me go let you in. I don't know. Is your name Sherry? Because that's the only person. Because otherwise I let people in before. So you should be in the group. Just refresh. If, if you don't see refresh the page. I let like four people in. So earlier. So make sure you refresh the page and check. Missy is your name. What was it? Sherry? I don't remember what I just did. Because other, otherwise, if, if I let you in before, um, make sure you refresh the, the, the group page so that I, so you'll see that you're, that you're in it. Okay, I'm going to go to the group and start looking at pictures. I'll take you with me. Make sure you... Put that it is week 68 MMM, or you can write mixed media mashup if you want, but usually we abbreviate to MMM. So make sure you put MMM week number 68, or just put MMM number 68 so that we know. Here is Mildred's, and I'll go through and refresh several times, so don't worry if you don't get it up, if it's not up right this second, just work on getting that up. And I'll start writing down, and I'll put a heart. I'll put a little heart on, on each picture as I've seen it. Mildred. Very nice. Very pretty. I like the colors. See, I put a little heart. That means I saw it. Barbara Rose. Yours is very pretty, too. Very pretty. Barbara Rose. Miss Yola is very pretty. I like all the circles. Very pretty. I like the colors too. The, the pinks and the corals and the purples. Carly Cal, very pretty. Butamus, butamus. I like the pastel background. Okay, very pretty journal, Miss Sharon. Rebecca. I like your kitty cats and the hearts. That's cute. Very cute. Miss Nikki, very pretty. Very nice, very nice and colorful. And Miss Rita's is very colorful too. 
Very nice. Very nice. Lots of good layering going on. That's all right, Amber. Amber was waiting for her green paint to dry. <laughs> Jody and Bobby Sutherland. You too did hearts. And we have a prompt that says hearts too. That's funny. That one didn't come up, but two people did hearts. <laughs> Coinky dink. Miss Rome and her pretty boho feathers. What did you, what color ink of gold did you use? Is that what you did the feathers with? And it wasn't shiny? Or it just didn't show up on camera? Miss Tasha, very pretty Miss Tasha. Oh, look at Tina's. How cool. Miss Tina. <laughs> Your dude like looks like he's jumping on clouds. Very cool. Okay. And I think we are at the end for the moment. Oh, how cute. Little baby. Okay, so we're going to refresh and see who else is added. Miss Deborah Little John, very pretty. Is it Debbie or Deborah? Debbie. Deborah. There's a lot of Debbies in our group. This is a popular name for crafters. <laughs> Ooh, I like yours, Kellyanne. That came out cool. And you were bitching about it, and it came out cool. I like yours. I don't know what you were bitching about. You said it wasn't pretty. I think it's really pretty. I like it. And we got Miss Rita. Ooh, Miss Karen's is very metallic and pretty. And you actually did it today. You've only did it mixed media mashup like one other time. Isn't that isn't that right, Karen? Or I think right. Limited at least, if at all. Because you're always working. Miss Laura, very pretty. I like your words. She put love. Very pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Ooh, I like the squiggles. Squiggles on Miss Karen's. Very nice. Miss Adels. Very pretty. I like your chevron pattern. That looks familiar. Could that possibly be a stencil from my store? I think I had that stencil in my store. Maybe I still do. Miss Tanya's Putty Putty. She too used bubble wrap. You're not feeling it? You don't have to feel all of them. Sometimes they don't come out the way you expect. I think it looks fine. It's layered. It's, you know, I think when you cut it up into like some ATCs, it'll. You know, and if you really, look, here's the thing. If you really don't like it, you know, I think it's fine. And when you, if you cut it up into ATCs or postcards, it'll be fine. But if, if, if ever you're in doubt and you really don't think it, you know, looks right, cut it up into ATCs and then take some white paint. In this case, since you don't have any kind of white paint 
and take some a stencil and go over areas of it with the white paint on the ATCs individually instead of like as it is right now. Cut it up first and then go over it with a small stencil design and do like almost three quarters of it with white paint through a stencil and I bet you you'll feel differently. It'll be like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And then you could build onto it from there and add like a photo or add like a graphic or something and make it into an ATC that way. Or just leave it as is, you know, and just add a sentiment to it. But, you know, don't, don't, you know, count it out just yet. There are, there are ways around it. Miss Sandy's. Yours is very pretty. I like your stencil design. Miss Missy's. Oh, yours looks cool, Miss Missy. I love it. You did a great job. I love this. It's fun time. <laughs> That's cute. Good job. Miss Kathleen Hollyby, very pretty. I like those those are they feathers or leaves? Well, I guess they're feathers, right? They can almost be leaves though. Pretty pretty. I like the green with the pink. Good contrast colors. Miss Shelley, very pretty. Nice and metallic. Miss Debbie Lee's very pretty. Love the stars. Then again, I love stars. Miss Christy Essen. Ooh, I like yours. Yours is pastel. That's pretty. Very pretty. And then we've got Miss Mildred. I think we got Miss Barbara. We've got that one, that one, that one. I think we're back to the beginning. We'll have to refresh because I'm sure there's new peoples that have posted theirs. So let's go up to the top. And I need a drink because my voice is getting horsey. Let's see. Oh, Vern made his. Very nice, Vern. Good job. Very nice. Good colors. I see that yellow and green in there for the Packers. And we got Kelly's. And we got, oh, there's Teresa's. I almost passed by yours. <laughs> Don't want to do that. I like the brick pattern. Very nice. And Leo Luminary, very nice. Love that. I like how that dark blue pops off of that background. Very nice. Miss J.D. Anderson, very nice. I like your dragonflies. And I like all your background goodies back here. You got swirls, all kinds of stuff going on. That's a good one. Good one. Ooh, look at that. Cool job. Let's open that up. There's a lot of layers going on there. I love it. We love, oh, and look, he scratched the, a peace sign. That's awesome. And a heart. Good job. That's Mary. Very good, very, very good, very good. Oh, I better like it here like that so I don't forget. But I did it already. I have a little John, we got that one. We got Rita, we got Karen. We got Laura's, and we got Karen's, and we got Adel's, and Tanya's, Sandy's, and Missy's. Okay, so let's go to the top one more time and refresh. I can't see the chat right now, so if you're in the chat, 
just give me a minute and I'll be back in. This is the same one, Karen. Okay, try to only post one picture so I don't get confused, but I liked it just to make sure that I don't get corn fused. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so it looks like everybody posted. I mean, there might be somebody that still needs to post, but we're going to find that out. I'm going to go back in the chat and we're going to find that out. Does anybody still need to post? Did I not get anybody? Now's the time to let me know. So if you didn't get it up yet, let me know. Hi, Lisa. What are you talking about? Doing the talking about mixed media or what type of glass stuff do you do? And how come you can't do it for at least a year? Okay, so I'm assuming everybody's got theirs up and I've seen everybody's because nobody's saying anything otherwise. So I'm gonna start cutting these up and putting them into the bucket so that I can pull a name. Oh, okay. Oh, did you change your name or was that always your name? Because I thought you've done Mixed Media Mashup before and I didn't think that was your name. Yeah, you can use gesso, or you could just use Mod Podge if you don't have gesso. That's fine. Anything, the only reason we use gesso mostly, I mean, if you're using a piece of cardboard, you might want to use gesso just to make it white, or you could just use white paint. But the most of the reason we use gesso in this situation is so that if you're using paper, either cardstock, watercolor, whatever, you put something on it first so that it doesn't buckle while you're doing it because you'll put like either Mod Podge, white paint, gesso, anything will work really just to get the surface already kind of primed and so that if you already got a, la a good layer of, of something on there, then any water that you use, whether it's glue or other paints, won't warp it continually as you're working. So it'll warp once when you put your fur, that whatever you put on it, white paint, gesso, Mod Podge. And then when you dry it, it'll be straightened out for the rest of the time that you're working on it pretty much. And so you don't have to worry about it continually like being weird and like warping. <clears throat> you have a lot of Facebook accounts for games. Oh, okay. Oh, I know what you mean because, yeah, because the games, it's better, it goes a lot of times based on people helping you out and whatnot and giving you lives or giving you things you need for the games. I gotcha. I never got into the games very much on Facebook. Awesome, Lisa. Yeah, I hope you play along with us. It's fun and easy. And like I said to, you know, everybody else, you don't have to have every single thing that we use. You could skip something or improvise with something else. You know, test the water, see if it's something you like to do before you, you know, invest any money into 
any mixed media supplies if you don't have any already. Most people like mixed media though. When they get when they try it, they usually like it because it's kind of free and messy and you just do whatever and you know, I mean it doesn't have to be obviously, but in a lot of ways it is and it's one of those types of art that you got a lot more freedom than you don't have to be so precise and that makes it a lot of fun because it's not as stressful as some other arts some people make it stressful on themselves but I think I think what happens is people start to think too much and when you think too much with mixed media it ends up making things worse instead of better so you're best not thinking too much Yeah, I hear a lot of people say that it's therapeutic. Definitely. It is for me, too. What do you mean, Debbie? Oh, yeah. Next time, make sure you let me know that you're, that you're not on there yet. Are you saying that it's on Mixed Media Mashup? Mashup? Oh, forget it. You're saying that it's on Facebook Messenger. That's what I was trying to say, but I started saying Mixed Media Mashup. Yeah, next time when I'm saying last call, let me know. Let me know if you're having a problem. Make sure you say something because I almost did the drawing without you in it. But I see yours. I got you. I'll put you in. That's why I say it over and over again. Make sure you let me know if you're still trying to get your picture up so that I can not start without you. I don't want to leave anybody out. We don't want to leave anybody out. That would not be fun. You're lucky you got it in just in the nick of time. <laughs> I'll I'll forgive you this time, Deborah. Oh, your tablet died. Oh, <laughs> well then I guess that's not your fault. Well then I'm gonna yell at your tablet. Bad tablet. How dare you! All right, mix them up real good. And what you're going to win is a little prize pack. It'll have a stencil in it. Ooh. It'll have something handmade in it. Ooh. And it might have some graphics and die cuts in it. Ooh. It's something like, you know, we're not giving out new cars because I'm broke. So in order to give out, you know, several prizes a week with various things, I like it's little prizes just so I don't kill myself and I'm able to give out. I'd rather give out a lot of little prizes than like one big prize because it's more fun when everybody gets a chance to win. All right, let's pick, get off of there. Miss Deborah Littlejohn. Woohoo, 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 woohoo. You win, you win. Miss Deborah Littlejohn. Okay. All right. Congratulations, Miss Deborah. Miss Grin and Ferret. That's not you. You're JD Anderson. Never mind. God, I can't keep it right. Deborah Little John is Deborah Lee. No. Wait, what's her name on here? Dang it. She barely ever talks. I can't remember what her name is on here. I think it's Debbie Lee. Is it the same as Facebook? I don't know. I don't know, but congratulations, you win. Message me on Facebook to any of the winners tonight. Message me on Facebook so that it doesn't so we don't have a delay in getting your prize to you. Because I need your address. So message me and tell me that you won mixed media mashup number such and such. And then send me your address. Or at pinkpoodlecrafts at gmail.com. You can send your address there too. 
Oh, Debbie Wingo. That's it. Okay. I knew it wasn't. Yeah. That. Oh, it's not you. Okay. Wait, huh? Oh, no, no, no. That's right. You're Debbie Lee Crafty Goose. This is Debbie the Little. There's too many Debbies. There's just too many. You all need to change your name. <laughs> there's too many Debras. So it's the other Debbie. Yeah, it's not Debbie Lee. It was Debbie Little John. That's right. I can't. I always forget who's who when it comes, especially the Debbies. It, there's so many of. De there's so many Debbies. <laughs> I think Debbie Little John's name on face on YouTube is Debbie Little John. I think, but I'm not sure. Oh yes, ma'am. Did you not, Mary? I got it. Did you um? I think, didn't I message you and tell you I got it or no? It might have been when I wasn't feeling good. I thought I, I got it on PayPal, though. I'm going to post the prompts. So, I'm going to do that. Oh, River City. Oh, okay, that's right. See, sorry, I forget. My brain doesn't work for some reason. There's too many Debbie Debbies, so I'm always thinking it's some Debbie this or Debbie that. But sorry, River, <laughs> you're Debbie Little John. Okay, I won't remember that, but I'm gonna try. I saw you. I see it. I see it. There's a delay in the chat, so. I see the chat when you put it up, but you don't hear me respond to it for like 30 seconds because of the delay. So, that's lovely Facebook. I don't know why they don't make it so that it's the same. Somehow. It's just weird. Weird. Oh, all right, well, then I must not have messaged you, but consider this your message. I got it. <laughs> I must not have replied to your message on Facebook, but I, I thought I saw your message on Facebook, but I was, I think I was half asleep because I haven't been feeling good. But all right, everybody, I'm not going to do an after stream today because I am still kind of tired and a little worn out. So, um, but hopefully I'll feel better in the next couple of days and we will have our Friday night stream, um, as normal because I have a mixed media canvas to finish and some other things to do. I understand Miss Debbie. I understand. That's why I'm trying to do them like around eight o'clock, but yeah, I'm going to go relax. I'm going to put these up first. That's why I have them in my hand. I'm not going to let them out of my hand until I go put them up in the group. So they will be in a file in the group. So have a good night, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. And congrats to the winners. And if you haven't done yours, make sure you do it in the next 24 hours. And I will add and make sure you tag me. If you're going to do it in the next 24 hours, tag me. Make sure you put MMM number 68 and tag me in, on, on Facebook. My name is Stacy Evans in the group. So, or you could just put MMM number 68. I'll find it. All right. Thanks. I'll talk to you guys later. Poodle Pack out. Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today, Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy.